Hello and welcome to the Photo Bar, the podcast talking all about the business and lifestyle of photography while drinking beer. This is episode number 18, Facebook ads that work for photographers with Andrew Helmage. Hey guys, what's happening? My name is Matt Druin and my goal is to help you become a better person, a better photographer and a better entrepreneur. So today I am chatting with my friend Andrew Helmage from Photobiz Exposed. Um, he's all the way from Australia and he's a hugely talented, successful photographer. He owns a multiple photographer studio. He's a podcaster, photography educator, cyclist, family man, and so much more. Honestly, I don't know how in the world he manages to do all the shit that he does. Uh, maybe he has multiple versions of himself. I have no clue, but he definitely gets shit done. And he's a totally awesome dude. And we're going to be diving into a topic that I know everybody is dying to know about. And that is how to get Facebook ads that actually fucking work. I don't know if you're anything like me, but I have tried dozens and dozens of times to get Facebook ads to work. And I've wasted a shit ton of money in that process. And it has never really panned out for me. So I talked to Andrew and I was like, dude, I know you know how to make this work. Let's make it happen so I can figure out what the hell to do, but also share that with everybody else. When we talk about his approach and the way he does things, I know that it actually works because he has a really large number of photographers who's actually used this method and they've all had huge success. And I'm actually personally going to try this approach out um, after you know recording this episode with Andrew and I'm going to tell you what my results are at the end of the episode. So if you're curious to see what happens with the money that I spend then be sure to listen to the end and I'll let you know. So I know that you're probably tired of letting Facebook control your reach and wasting money for paying for eight Facebook ads and they're just not working and you're really excited to hear what Andrew has to say. But before we do, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the podcast and do it now. I would really appreciate it and it's a great way to let me know that you're actually listening. Also, if you could, please leave a five-star review on iTunes because that would be a huge help as well. And if you haven't already, join the Facebook group. You can do that by searching Facebook in the search field there and just type in Photo Bar Podcast Lounge. Or you can just visit facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Photo Bar Podcast. So with that, let's go ahead and open the bar. All right, so today we have Andrew Helmich here at the bar with us. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure, mate. And you're all the way from Australia, right? Yeah, yeah, and it's it's going to be fun and interesting being on the other side of the questions for a change. So yeah, yeah. What time is it over there? It's nine thirty in the morning, so way too early for a beer for me. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna sit beside you with my cup of tea. I've already had a coffee this morning, but uh, and a beer that might come a little bit later. All right, awesome. Well, I have a New Belgium Voodoo Ranger Juicy Haze IPA that's unfiltered. And I've never had an unfiltered beer before, so that's my first one. How does it taste? Is it any different? No, not really. It's good, <laughs> but no, it doesn't really taste any different than like a normal filtered beer, I guess. Okay. Awesome. I mean, I, do you yeah. like pale ales? Because they're popular over here, but I, I just, yeah, they don't do anything for me at all. Oh, really? Yeah, no, I love like any kind of IPAs and I don't really, I'm pretty much down with any beer. Some sours I'm not too into. But pretty much anything else, like I'm into. Yeah, right. Yeah, I, was, I mean, they're popular over here now, and there's, there's more and more craft beers coming onto the market. But yeah, IPAs, just, I don't like them. Yeah, they're not for everybody, that's for sure. My wife, it, she thinks I'm insane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she can't even smell it. <laughs> well, I'm with her. <laughs> but yeah, seriously, thanks for joining me. Um, and today I want to talk to you about Facebook ads because that seems like the new hot topic, I guess, especially because it seems like every photographer is always complaining about how terrible Facebook reach is, especially with the new rollout of the algorithm that just came out a couple weeks ago. It's apparently even worse, which I'm experiencing that um, as well. But are Facebook ads in general a good way to gain exposure? Absolutely, they are, and you know, and what you're saying there about the, the new algorithm uh, and and 
organic reach on a regular Facebook post. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, that's true. I mean, Facebook is always making it more difficult. But I, I still I still believe that it hasn't changed that much. If you put out the kind of content that your viewers want to or readers want to want to see are, are engaged with, will comment on and, and, and potentially share and like, then I think you are going to get organic reach. So I, a lot of photographers, I think back in the old days, you know, when Facebook first kicked off, anything you posted reached all of your page likers or your fans. And now they're just making it like Facebook should be. It should be entertaining. It should be it should be full of posts that you want to share with your friends and like and engage with and comment on. So if you if you're not putting out those kind of posts, then Facebook isn't going to show it to your likers. So I don't have a I don't have a problem with what Facebook's doing. I think it, the problem is with the photographer. Yeah, I would fully agree. I'm on the same page, especially because, as you know, as photographers, we probably follow a lot of other photographers and other companies and stuff, and eventually that becomes really overwhelming that you can't really see anything that you, like, family-wise or friends and stuff, it's just everything else, you know? So, yeah, I'm okay with that, too. Yeah, and what you said there is so true. I mean, I open up my Facebook feed, and personally, I don't spend a lot of time on Facebook, but if I open my feed... I see uh, one or two, I see a post, maybe two from family or friends, then I'll see an ad, and then I'll see more posts from family or friends. It's re- very rare that I see a post from a business uh, just in my you know, organic uh, uh, organic post in my feed, mm-hmm. unless other photographer friends or family or friends have tagged me in something or shared something or there's a lot of engagement going on with that post. So obviously that photographer who's posted that that post or that status update has said something interesting that's worth sharing. Right. So yeah, I think it fits in with what Facebook was designed for in the first place. Yeah. So so what you're saying is they've created really good content that people enjoy and they want to share. Yeah. yeah. And and I think too, it's it, you could even liken it to TV. I mean. I don't know if you're like me and that, but when I'm watching, I rarely watch TV, and if I do watch it, it's only stuff that I've recorded so I can fast forward the ads. I'm just so over the ads and seeing junky content. I'm going to pick and choose what I want to see. And I think Facebook, to stay viable, wants us to see stuff that we want to see in our feed. And that's what they're curating for Mm us. Yeah, honestly, I think Facebook knows what we want more than what we know that we want or think that we want, (laughs) right? I think you're right. Yeah, Yeah, they have the data. They know. Yeah, they they do. I mean... (laughs) As much as people hate Facebook and, uh, you know, I guess it's, I don't love Facebook. I certainly don't spend much time on it. I use it for my business, but I don't, I don't make many personal status updates uh, and I rarely flick through my feed. But when I do, I know that Facebook is trying to send me stuff or show me stuff from my close friends and from my family. Mm-hmm. Which is good. Yeah. Yeah, because that, that's, I guess, that's well, that is the stuff that I want to see. That's the stuff I'm interested in. If I got right. bombarded with stuff from photographers, uh, you know, even if I have liked a bunch of pages, I'd get pretty tired of it pretty quickly. Yeah, it's, that's a good point. Speaking of which, I mean, um, so this is not really Facebook ads, but I'm just on that point. Um, so what if we really did see all of the Facebook pages that we liked, right? As photographers, we usually like a lot of other photographers' pages which means that all we would see is content from all these other people, you know? What, what a night. I mean, already now photographers complain that so much of our work all looks the same. It'd be even worse. <laughs> and then, and how little time would you spend on Facebook if all you saw was posts from other photographers? I mean, yep. you can do that on Instagram. You can do that on, on other photo apps that if you want to or go searching out sites. If you got that in Facebook as well, you'd be pretty sick of it pretty quick and Facebook would lose its market share. No, absolutely. I, I fully agree. Yeah, that's interesting. I didn't really think about that part, but that would be really annoying. <laughs> I agree. Well, let me ask you this then. So let's go with like paying for reach, I guess. Um, I have wasted a ton of money over the years, and probably thousands of dollars on tons of Facebook work uh, ads that never worked for me. What is the deal with Facebook ads? How can we make it work? <laughs> Yeah, the, the, the big question, isn't it? Yeah, everybody I think has it. It's, yeah, and I think it is the number one place to, to generate leads, uh, to get bookings and, and, you know, to potentially make sales because of the, the profiling that you talked about. I mean, they, they know what we want. They know what we want to see. So I think the, the very first thing 
to consider or think about if you're going to run an ad is who your target market is, who you are looking to target with your ad. And I think this this extends past Facebook ads. I think this is an issue that a lot of photographers have. I think most photographers have is they want to appeal to everyone. They're too scared to, to refine and, and push away, so refine the, who their target market is and push away anyone that doesn't fit into that, that I don't want to say funnel, but into that into that group. Mm. So if you're if you're a well, let's say a wedding photographer, and most wedding photographers think they have to target every engaged couple. You know, they they want everyone in their area to come to them. But really, you would have a more successful business if you had a, a specific look or a certain style that only some engaged couples liked. Or maybe you, you like to shoot in certain locations or you only want to cover small elopement weddings or maybe you want to only cover church weddings. So it, it, the more specific you can be with your targeting, the more likely you are to attract your perfect target client. And, and the worst thing you can do is just target everyone. So, okay, going off the elopements, because I actually have a friend who specializes in elopements. Um, so it would be better for her to be very specific on the target audience of people that want elopements versus trying to get anybody just to see the app. Absolutely, absolutely. And so she if she targets yeah, elopements only, that's her, that's her primary uh, couple or target market, then she would know a lot about those couples. And I, I would, I don't want to say they're going to be necessarily adventurous, but they would fit a certain profile. Sure. You know, they... You know, they would, they would probably like to get away together. They like to do go and travel. Uh, I'm imagining they're going off to a lope somewhere. They like to go and explore. Um, they're happy to get off the beaten track and not follow the crowd. So these are all terms that you would probably, or she would probably use on her website copy, mm-hmm. and that would be the same thing you would do with your Facebook ad. So you would, you know, you, you would lead with a headline in your ad, which can start out as a, as a, a post on your timeline, which you can make into an ad, that uh, you know exactly who you're looking for. Engage couples that are thinking about eloping, that are adventurous, love to get out and explore, don't want to follow the crowd, and want to do things their way. I mean, to me, that is a headline that is going to speak to her perfect couple. Well, that's odd that you bring that up because that's exactly what she does target. <laughs> Very okay. adventurous couples <laughs> just like that. Perfect. So, so if she's to run an ad and she starts with that headline... You know, wanted, engaged couples, all the things that I just said there that she has in her post, you're going to find that couples that are thinking about a church wedding or having a, a big family get together, a real traditional uh, style wedding, they're just going to flick straight past that post or, or that ad. They're going to ignore that. But the person that is thinking about eloping, they're going to be stopped in their tracks and they're going to be thinking, well, this photographer is talking to me. I'm going to stop and take note and, and then read the next line in the ad, which is, the number one thing you want to try and do. Okay. Well, that brings up a good point. So what are the most important things when it comes to an ad? Is it like the photo or the videos that we're showing, the, the title, the copy, or something else? Yeah, that's a, that's a tough question because to me, uh, there's two things. So I think you need to have a photo that's going to grab your target market's attention. So this photographer that you're talking about, uh, the the one who shoots elopements, Mm -hmm. I'm guessing that she would have something in her portfolio that would stop people that are thinking about having uh, that kind of a wedding, an elopement, in their tracks. So they're flicking through their Facebook timeline, they see that ad or that photo, they're going to stop and take notice. And I think every photographer has to or should have something like that that, that speaks to them and also speaks to their perfect target client. So you could argue that's that's going to what is going to be what stops someone in their in their tracks as they're scrolling through their feed. The visual. But I think, sorry, visual. Uh, the, yes. Yeah. The the visual. So the photo yeah. and the video is like the number one thing, right? Yes. Yes. And, and we'll come we'll come back to the photo in just one second. Okay. But I think also, <laughs> I think the headline is just as critical because unless. Unless that person reads your copy, which starts with a headline, then the ad is a waste of money. It's not doing what, yeah. it, what you're intending it to do. So the headline has to grab their attention. It has to be hyper-specific. And you, you have to not be afraid to push the wrong audience away. You know, you, you need to just go in. It's got to be all in. You're going for one type of couple or one type of audience only. 
and pushing everyone else away. So going back to the you know the visual part, the the first photo or video, is it better to use one photo, um, like maybe a slideshow, <laughs> a video? Like, what do you think is working best? Yeah. So, so face, if you read what's going on in Facebook, most people will tell you, or most experts or gurus will tell you that video is the way to go. And and, look, and I agree to some extent. If you're doing uh, Facebook Live videos, they are going to go well organically. Um, in regards to an ad, uh, from what I've tested and from what I've seen, it doesn't make a big difference. Uh, I'll just as happily go with a single photo, a group of photos in a slideshow, which you can call a video, uh, or you could just do a group of photos together at the top of the post. So Facebook gives you a few options when you're when you're creating a post. So okay. if you've only got – so this elopement photographer – and this – what we're talking about here really applies to, doesn't matter if you're a newborn photographer, a family photographer, a kids photographer, a pet photographer, you find the photo that's gonna to speak to your perfect target audience and hopefully it encapsulates the kinds of photography that you wanna be shooting. So in your style, showing a location or in a style that you like to, to process and shoot in. Yeah, that makes total sense. Just thinking about like when I'm scrolling through my Facebook feed, um, I don't usually click on a lot of ads, but um, recently I actually purchased Masterclass. Have you ever heard of that, Masterclass? Yes. Yeah, okay. I saw that I actually gifted one of those to who, Annie, with Annie Leibovitz to a photographer friend of mine. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's super cool. Um, that's one I was actually looking at. But the one that popped up in my feed was a, a different one, but I was attracted to the video component of it. And, I was like, and then it hit like everything that I felt I needed, like at that moment, so I ended up buying it. <laughs> it was the first <laughs> time that I've ever bought anything off of a Facebook ad. But there that makes no sense. I stopped because of the visual component, then read the title, and I was like, oh, I want to learn more. So then I clicked on it and went further in depth. So yeah, that makes total yeah. sense. Yeah, that's exactly right. And you could you know, you know, could argue that the it's, the it's the headline that's doing the heavy lifting, but I, I think most people would be stopped by a photo first, um, but you, but you, I don't want to discount the fact or the importance of that headline. That has to be like the, the it's on equal with the equal par with the, the photo or the visual, um, if, if not more important, because it has to speak to your perfect target client. Okay. Well, if that's the case, then how do we write really good like titles for the headline? Well, you, you need to say exactly who you're looking for. So who is this for? So, you know, a typical and a very simple uh, example would be wanted, engaged couples, and then you go in and describe your perfect engaged couple. If you're targeting kids, um, you don't want to just target kids. You want to be hyper-specific. You want to target kids aged between four and eight years old or kids aged between six and ten and, and not only stop there, because that's still too broad. You want to say something about those particular kids that you're trying to photograph. Uh, kids that are kids aged between four and eight with their pet dog, for example, mm. or kids aged between four and eight who are happy to get outside, get dirty, uh, aren't afraid to run through the long grass and come back with ripped clothes. You know, something like that. You're trying to right. paint a picture of your perfect target client and shoot. Gotcha. Okay, so it'd be like, Kids three to four with messy messy faces. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, uh, but I think even more than that. More um, than that. To describe how they're going to get their messy faces. You know, they're, okay. they're happy to be throwing mud at each other during a photo session and uh, aren't going to get in trouble with mum and dad. You know, you want to you want to talk a, you want to create a picture of the the session or the the person that you're trying to attract, so that when you go into this shoot they know exactly what they're up for and you've got the freedom to shoot the way that you've advertised and you've also spoken to a very specific family or, or, or parents with your ad so if you if you advertise that you want to photograph um, kids aged between four and eight that are happy to get uh, dirty running through puddles and long grass and explore the bush uh, for a photo session then you're not going to have the the parents of the uh, I don't know the, the the private school kid who studies and plays piano you know, and, and doesn't get outside on the weekend th those those families are going to go straight past that ad right but you're going to have the, the parents of the kids 
who who love to get out there and get filthy dirty every weekend or after school and before school, they're going to be saying, this guy, this photographer, he's looking for my kids. My kids are perfect. Ah, gotcha. Which, that would be my son. My son would be that <laughs> See, that, so if, you, if you saw that post, you'd be like, hey, this I guy. I totally would. I'd be all about it. <laughs> yeah, you're looking for Mason. And, you, and, and, you know, the other good thing about a really strong headline and a, and a strong ad, and we'll go further into the ad if you like, mm-hmm. but uh, if if I if you didn't see this ad, but so I'm, I'm I'm looking for um, your son in my ad. I've described him perfectly, and you didn't see this ad. There's a good chance that one of your friends saw this ad and said, "Oh, this is Matt's son down to a T." Yeah. Like, so then what they do is they tag you in that post or they share it with you, and that's the beauty. That's how you're going to get organic reach via an ad, which started out as a post on your timeline. Ah, interesting. Okay. So that makes sense. Well, let me ask you this. How much space do you know, like, for the title, is there to put this type of content in? Well, it's this is just a post on your timeline. So you oh. can make it as long or as short as you want to. But but that's a great question because what I see, so many people, the mistake they may make is they start typing in their, their post and they just do line after line after line after line and there's no paragraph breaks. So a little trick to make your ad or any post that you put up very easy to read and look like, and make it look in a way that people want to consume it and actually read it is to add paragraph breaks, add line breaks, lines or spaces between your paragraphs. And if you're composing inside the inside Facebook, just hold your shift key and hit return and that will add a, a, paragra- a paragraph or a line break. Oh, perfect. That's awesome. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned that because it took me probably half a year before I realized you can hit shift, enter, and then like, yeah. move it. <laughs> um, and it. It makes a huge difference. I mean, I, if I yeah. see a big block of text, even a reply to something I've written, I'm mean, like, oh, man, I don't want to read this. Yeah, I typically <laughs> won't even read it. I'll just kind of skim the first sentence and move on. Yeah, yeah that's a <laughs> that's, really valid yeah. point. And what you say is valid too because, you know, you say you read the first sentence and it, unless it's really good, mm-hmm. you're skipping off to the next thing. And that's exactly what I'm saying about a headline. If that headline does not speak to your perfect target client or audience, they're skipping off to the next thing in the feed because that's what Facebook does. It's got something else just as exciting and fun for that that person clicking through their feed mm-hmm. in the next post. So your your headline and your your visual has to catch their attention and stop them in their tracks okay now this is making a lot of sense so almost i need to evaluate what i do on facebook and create ads for that because uh, you're describing my what i do like when i get on facebook and i'm looking at stuff like perfectly yeah i think it's the same for everyone and i think it's the huh. same as you, if you're clicking through a newspaper or a magazine you know it's it's a visual and then a headline right if they I catch you it's, yeah Interesting. Uh, and also, I want to uh, kind of circle back around real quick. Um, so you're saying we should actually write on our Facebook page, for example, all this content that we're trying to do with the title and the, the content and the page breaks and, and the photo. And then are we boosting that from our page? Because typically I would go into, like, say, Ad Manager and create an ad in there. But it right. sounds like you're describing something on a Facebook page. Yes. So I... Okay. My suggestion is to create a Facebook post on your Facebook page and you can boost, but look, boosting, it's getting better with the targeting, but you can do a lot more like, you know, with Ads Manager. Right. But what you can do inside Ads Manager is create a campaign, a cam- sorry, create a campaign like you would with any other ad. But when you get down to the ad creation part of your campaign, you can choose to use a post that oh. you've just posted or, or go back in your timeline. Generally, it's going to be one you just created. So at the very bottom, you select use a recent post and then it'll present all your recent posts, select the one that you want, and that becomes your ad copy. It's It's funny because now Facebook is really adamant about, like, if you create a post, they're like, hey, you should boost this post or you should use this for an ad. Like, so... um, It gives you suggestions. Oh, yeah, all the time. I can't post anything without it saying, you should do this, you should do that. I'm like, all right, great, thank you. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but no, that's a good idea. So, I never thought about that because I always go into the ads manager. I'm trying to create this fancy title and this copy, and it's kind of limiting on the Facebook manager side of it of how much mm. copy you can put in there. 
but on a post yeah. you could literally put anything in there and then absolutely use that yeah. as an ad that's right and yeah i think the only reason that i wouldn't create the post or the ad on my timeline and uh and then create an ad from that is if for example i didn't want my current page likers my fans as they used to be called to see that ad because i could then create the ad inside ads manager hide it from people who like my page uh, and target uh, target a different audience altogether but it's pretty rare that a photographer is going to want to do that um, yeah. there's not a lot of reasons maybe you want to target um, a brand new audience or you want to test something in a different area then you might go and do that okay. inside there but most, for, for most listeners for most photographers you just create the post uh, on your feed and we'll create an ad from that inside ads manager yeah. I mean, plus with the organic reach, anyways, nobody's really going to see it. So I guess it doesn't matter either way. Well, that's yeah. Well, yeah. Like most most people have people who like their page that are potential clients for their photography business, sure. so they're happy. And then you're going to get that organic reach, which is free. And if you create your ad or your post correctly, and you do you follow the things that we've been talking about, then you should get as much organic reach, uh, well, a lot of organic reach compared to what you normally get. And that will um, offset or be offset against what you spend on your ads. Plus, I guess these people could also see this and maybe tag their friends or whatever. Exactly. That may not be good for, it, for them personally, but you know, th maybe they've worked with you in the past and like, hey, you gotta hire this guy for this, right? Absolutely, perfect. Okay. And that, you miss out on that if you don't post onto your timeline. Oh, gotcha, okay, that makes sense. Before we go more into the ad part of it, um, is would Instagram be a good place for ads too? Like if we boost or I guess pay for this post to be an ad on Facebook, could we do that on Instagram or no? Well, you could. You could definitely do this on Instagram. Uh, you are. It, I think it's today. It's still cheaper to run these ads on Facebook. Oh. Uh, but certainly, but look, it's not. It's not a huge expense. I and mean, I'm talking about spending thirty or forty dollars for an ad. That's going to run for a week. So if you want to test this on Instagram, I'd say, yeah, go for your life. Um, for me personally, within my Instagram feed or my Instagram page, I have people who follow me from all around the world. Whereas if I'm running an ad to photograph engaged couples uh, or, or kids, I'm going to be really only wanting to be targeting my local area. So I can create an ad, I can create an ad inside Ads Manager that will just go to my Instagram, or sorry, go out onto Instagram. So yes, you could do that, but it wouldn't be the sort of thing I'd post onto my feed. Okay, no, so that makes sense. So if maybe if we want to test that, we'd create two separate ads, one for Instagram, one for Facebook? Yeah, but, and that's what I would suggest, because it's always, like we can we can guess and, and try and think of different scenarios for different listeners, but the best thing is to test it. I mean, you're talking about 30 or $40, throw some money at it, mm -hmm. you've already got all the copy there, you've got the, the visuals there, just run on one on Instagram, one run one on Facebook. See which one outperforms the other. Okay. Um, all right. So let's dive into the ad part of it. So we've created a great title, all right? So where do we go from the title part to the ad? Okay. So I think before we even get into the ad, Matt, the, the best thing would be to explain. So th this particular ad that I'm talking about today is an ad for free session so i'm going to give away a free session in and and a free print as well a small print of five by seven and the idea of this is that i make a sale on the back end so people will apply for this free shoot i'm going to photograph that family that kid that couple in an engagement shoot and i'm going to hopefully and i'm going to show you give you some ideas how to do this to make a great sale on the back end or book the wedding from the engaged couple so the photographer that's listening that wants to follow along and try this, they have to be confident enough with their photographic ability to be able to get great images on the shoot, deliver a great experience, and make a sale on the back end. Now, for me, and I don't, I don't know about you for sure, Matt, but I'm guessing it'd be similar to me. We've both been in business for quite a while. When I'm shooting portrait sessions, I'll go into th different things like third-party marketing with other businesses, and I'll give away free sessions. So I've done this for years and years and years, given away free sessions, uh, usually an eight by 10 with those free sessions, and then made a sale on the back end. So this Facebook is basically an extension of that strategy, but you don't need a partner business to do it with, you just do it on your own. 
Does that make sense? No, it, it, that does. It's very interesting. So what if, what if we don't do in-person sales? Like how do we make that money on the back end? Well, you, then you do an online sale and that works just as effectively. So, uh, I mean, I've got one mate in Sydney. He, he does these Facebook ads. He goes along, he does the sessions, and then he does an online sale because he has a full-time job. His average sale is uh, just over $1,000 from doing these sessions. From this, yeah. from this type of ad? Yes. Holy <laughs> yeah. shit. Yeah. So you're talking and about, he, we throw 30 bucks at this, we could potentially make 1000 bucks. Yeah, but in saying that, so this photographer, he's a great photographer. So, you, so that was my caveat at the beginning. That the, the photographer that tries this has to be confident in their photographic sure. ability and, and be prepared and follow, the, I guess, the strategy or the sequence to to go and lead to a sale at the end. Okay. okay. Well, I, mean, I mean, I think that would be the bare minimum. If we're going to run Facebook ads, you would have to be pretty good at the photography part. <laughs> right. Yeah, so, absolutely. Um, but yeah, I guess the other... The other side of the coin is if you're not that good at photography or you're thinking about going into business, this is a great way to build your portfolio. Uh, or you could be, so say, take you for example, you're a wedding photographer, maybe you want to go and see what it's like to photograph pets because you've heard that's a great market, a great niche, mm-hmm. it's quiet in winter. You, know, you could run one of these ads and target um, miniature schnauzers or Great Danes or you know, pick a breed of dog and, uh, and target them and then build your portfolio so you can start generating some some more shoots, um, shooting pets, and you have the potential to make sales as well while you're building that portfolio. Oh, great idea. So like, even if we were like, say, trying to break into weddings, we could do that with engagement sessions and shoot like 20 engagement sessions, make sales on it, and build a portfolio up for the engagement part at least. Yes. And maybe yeah, and some be- weddings. We, yeah, you will. You should. If you if you deliver a good experience, and you take some great photos at the engagement shoots, then there's every chance. I'm, I'm, I'd be amazed if you did uh, half a dozen shoots and didn't book a couple of weddings out of that. If you were a good photographer and you delivered a great experience, because that couple now you have this rapport with them. You you've been out with them on a shoot. You've spoken to them on the phone a couple of times before the session. They've come in for a sales session, and you can even throw in all the digital files, for example, if they book you for their wedding. So now you've, oh. you've given them an incentive to book you for their wedding. They already know, like, and trust you. There's a really good chance they're going to book you for their wedding. That's really smart. I mean, honestly, because, I mean, as a wedding photographer, I know, like, couples, planning a wedding is hard. And once they've gotten that committed with something, it's pretty easy to kind of move them into hiring you for their wedding. I agree. Yeah, that's a very smart move. You've got that rapport now. And really, at the end of the day, that's what every wedding photographer wants to do. They want to get in front of engaged couples. And they want a chance to show their personality and how good they are and and how much fun they are to be with and how skilled they are. And this is the the easiest way or one of the easiest ways to get in front of that that couple and have them to yourself, uh, you know, for an hour and show, show how good you are, show your personality. That's it. Yeah, I, there's nothing better than, you know, giving no. them a taste, right? Yeah, I agree. Oh, man, so this is really good. Okay, so when <laughs> do we send, like, all right, so wait, we've created this title and stuff. What do we put in the ad copy itself? Okay, so you, you need to have a, a reason that you're giving away these free shoes. So your headline was who you're looking for, and now you need to say why you're looking for these people. You know, what... What's the why are you giving away these free shoots? You know, why are you sure. looking for, for my why are you looking for my son who loves to get out there and get dirty? Why, what for? Let, let, let's do this real quick. All right, so I've been in business for a long time, I don't need to give away free anything, right? So, <laughs> what would be my incentive to give away free stuff? Well, because you're going to make the sale on the back end, okay? Because the hardest thing is, is particularly when you're new, or let's say, so you're a wedding photographer, Matt, do you shoot a lot of portraits? Uh, yeah, I would say some. I'm not a lot. It's not really my main focus area, but yeah. Okay, so you've got old uh, previous wedding clients coming to you for portrait sessions, I'm guessing. That, that's what happens with a lot of wedding for photographers. Sure. And let's say you want to build that up. You want to start shooting more portraits. Um, you know, you can send out messages and emails to those previous clients and let them know that's what you're doing. That's probably going to work. I mean, there's so many different things you can do. This is just another way to get more shoots booked in. Right. So you're going to book these free sessions, you're going to give them away. You're only going to give a limited number away, which we'll get into in a second. And the idea is 
that you only give these shoots away to the people that you know are interested in buying more photos after the shoot, and then you go on to make a sale after the session. Okay, all right. So with the ad copy then, like, like I wouldn't want to say, hey, I'm giving away free stuff. Uh, I've been in business for a long time. You know, I don't, I don't need to give away anything for free. So <laughs> what would I put in there that doesn't sound like I'm desperate for work, I guess? Yeah, so that really good question. So you need to have a reason. You need to, and you need to have an honest reason why you're giving these shoots away. Uh, honest, uh, you don't want to say, you don't want to be like super, <laughs> but I don't want to give you the, the wrong impression, but you don't want to go in and say, I'm doing this to make sales. Because even though that's the ultimate goal at the end, but your some reasons that you might be giving away these free shoots is to test some new locations, to try some new camera equipment, to try some new posing, to try some new locations, to try some new post processing, to try uh, a different uh, demographic, to add new images to your website. For a new marketing campaign, you need some images. You you just need to come up with a reason why you want to do these shoots. Okay. But it, but it has to be honest, you know. So if you're going to be shooting for your portfolio, and I come and apply, I, I expect to see some photos or at least a photo from my shoot in your portfolio. Well, let's do this. I'm going to use myself as an example. So I'm trying to get even more. Like I do some family documentaries, but um, I'm trying to get even more of them. And my biggest <laughs> hurdle so far has been I am the only one that I can find in the state of Georgia that's doing them the way that I'm doing them. Um, so it, it's been hard trying to get people to, they, they love the photos, right, that I've done so far, but it's hard to get people to hire me for them because I don't think I really have enough diversity in my portfolio. Mm -hmm. So could I put something like that? Like, hey, I need more families of this type, right? Yeah, so your, your head, that's right. So your headline would be targeting that specific family. So, and you have a, I'm sure you have an idea in your head who yeah. these families are. You know, they could be messy, that their house could be trash, like not trash, but you know, it's, it's not a, a display home, you know? Sure. I mean, you paint the picture of the family that, that's you want. That's the problem I have now is all the ones I've done so far are picturesque, right? Like they're all like perfect looking families and just perfect everything, even on, but on the backside, it's, they're really not like that, but that's what it looks like. Right. right. Okay, so, so your ad might start with wanted, uh, unperfect families. I'm looking for families with oh. two to three kids uh, who can leave their, their house as it is when they wake up on a Saturday morning and just enjoy each other's company and are uh, happy to get outside and play with the kids. And, and, and that's more important than tidying the house. You know, a headline, okay. it needs to be refined a little bit, but you get the idea. We're painting sure. a picture of a family that don't get up and, and, and make the house spotless before they leave in the morning. Okay. So now that we got and, this, this ad copy kind of set, you know, where do they go? Like, where do we send people to? Okay. So so just quickly, just back to your, if we're using you as an example, so sure. your, your reason would be... Um, to, to build a portfolio. You know, you're looking to mm -hmm. do more of these shoots and you need, you're looking for these families to build that portfolio. Um, so that's, that's your first reason. And then what you want to do if you're creating an ad and you'll see, the listener will see this if they, uh, if they are looking at other ads, whether it's in newspapers, magazines, online, wherever, but you want to have a, a hook or even two hooks if you can to get people to take action because Unless you, you, you give them a reason to actually do something and then tell them what to do, they won't do it. So a hook, uh, a simple hook is to add scarcity. And I'm sure you've heard of that, have seen that, listeners would have seen that too. And an easy way to add scarcity is to limit the number of shoots that are up for grabs. So you might say there's only three sessions available or there's only five of these free sessions available. Oh, so that's really good because I probably... If I was creating an ad, I probably wouldn't even think of that, which is maybe why my old ads haven't worked. <laughs> I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't have anything a re, like a really good call to action like that. Um, yeah, well, so we, so if you if you limit if you add some scarcity, then people are going to think, okay, well, I've got to do this now, or it's going to be gone, and that this is how you're going to prompt them to take action. And I'm not saying you only have to shoot three or five. You're advertising, you're promising to give away three or five. But if you get 10 great applications, 
there's nothing to prevent you from photographing seven, eight, nine, or ten families. Hey, man, this, I don't know why. I don't know this is all just dawning on me now. Hopefully, it is for like people listening. But that's kind of the way I run my weddings. Like, I only take you know usually about twenty weddings a year is where I stop, and I do that because one, I don't want to be burnt out. But two, it, it is a scarcity thing, which allows me to charge more, uh, in a sense, right? Absolutely, so yes. That makes, I don't know why I never thought about this, like for the Facebook <laughs> part of it. That makes total sense. Huh. Yeah. So what could another hook be then if we didn't, besides this, the scarcity part? What, what could something else be? Well, we, get, we, can, we can use the scarcity, and, and I encourage you to use the scarcity, and then you can add a second hook, and that would be an incentive for them to take action. And that, and that the incentive for us is the shoot is for free and includes a complimentary print, which means the person seeing the ad has got nothing to lose. They're not committing any money. They're going into this shoot and they're going to come out with, that they don't know yet a great experience, but they're going to come away from the shoot with a photo. They've got something they can frame if they want to, um, something they can use, something tangible. They don't have to spend any more money at this stage. Would it be okay if we offered something more or something different? Like what if somebody says like, yeah, I really want to do this, but one single photo print is not not enough of my time, I guess. Or is that not who we're targeting? Well, that's right. So if the person's not happy, well, okay, so there's two parts to this one, two parts to my answer. But the first thing is the next line in your ad can say something like, but you do have the opportunity or you will have the opportunity to purchase more if you love your photos. So straight away they know, okay, I'm going to get a shoot, I'm going to get a free print. If I want to buy more and I had a great time and I love my photos, there's the opportunity to buy more if I want to. So that opportunity is there. If that is still not enough to have someone respond and reply or apply for the shoot, then you know, you're not going to get everyone. And that's not the okay. idea. It's just not your target client. What if we used a digital file? Would that work the same way or no? We want them to buy uh, tangible stuff. Well, the digital file, great question. So they, that is more valuable. Mm-hmm. And I don't think it's going to get you more bookings, but it's potentially going to lose you uh, more sales on the back end. Okay. So you want to get, you want to give away the the absolute minimum possible to have people respond and apply for the shoot. So the, the less you give away, the more chance you've got of making a better sale on the back end. Okay, perfect. Now that makes sense. Um, and, th- and this, I've got to say, Matt, this is the biggest. This is probably the the, the thing that most people struggle with. And I've seen people make the biggest mistakes, which is they want to give, they feel guilty and they want yeah, to give that's more the way away. Was, that's why I asked you, because I'm starting to feel guilty. I was like, dude, I'm just like going to waste all these people's time from a, pretty much my own benefit, especially with the marketing aspect of it, you know? Yeah, um, but, they, but they're coming into it with, for, for a good experience, good fun. They're going to come away with a photo and they know, and I've got to reiterate here, you're definitely not hiding the fact that they will have the opportunity to purchase more. Sure. So you're going to mention it in your ad, you're going to mention it when you book them in, and if they're not interested in buying any more prints, we're not doing the shoot. Okay. Okay. We're only going to photograph the families or the couples or the people that want to buy more. Maybe a bit different with couples because you have the potential to book a wedding, right. but you won't book them in if they've already got a wedding photographer booked. Oh, exactly. Okay, that makes sense. So with them, it may be okay to say, hey, work through the digital files from the engagement session. Um, if you book us for your wedding, I wouldn't tell them in the ad. So in the ad, okay, it's the same. Right. The ad is it's a free shoot. It's the chance for me to try some new locations and uh, a new look. But and you're going to get that the session free, and you're going to get the free five by seven print. That's it. The 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 talk about uh, free or included digital files afterwards if they book the wedding. That all happens at the sales session. Okay, gotcha. Okay, so we can negotiate that later on. If yeah, that, if that, that was a pull through potentially, you know, to get them yes. to hire us, yeah, that's, okay. that doesn't come up. That does not come up until you are sitting back in your studio uh, and doing the sales session, or if you're doing an online sales session, that would happen after they place their order. So let's say they place their order for a thousand dollars, you you might say uh, when you deliver the files, hey guys, I'm going to give you five hundred dollars off if you decide to go with me for your wedding photographer or three hundred dollars or whatever number you want to come up with. Sure. You might even throw them in. You know, so they they're getting a thousand dollars. They literally had signed over to you for their photos. They're gonna get that for free if they sign the contract to have you as their wedding photographer. And that's an awesome pull through for 
somebody planning Absolutely. a wedding and booking a photographer, yeah, that's a good deal. Yeah, and, and, and the good thing is at that stage, they've already committed the $1,000, so they they do love what you've already done. Sure. And now you're giving okay. $1,000 off or 500 off. Yeah, I love it. That's great. Okay, so let me, I'm trying, I'm trying to think through this. All right, so now that we, I'm, I'm guessing we're not putting all this in the ad copy, you know? Yes, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what, this is the ad copy. So we've got our headline, what? we've got our reason, okay. we've got our two books. But yeah, are, so that, are we explaining there that we're, they have the opportunity to like buy more prints and all this stuff yeah. in the ad? Yeah, so that's only one sentence. So yeah, so um, th this shoot, the, the second hook is um, this. Sh the shoot is free. Um, I'll also include a complimentary five by seven print. And if you love your photos, yes, you'll have the opportunity to purchase more afterwards. So it's all there. It's only oh. a couple of lines. Yeah. Okay. okay. I thought we were sending them somewhere else, maybe like a landing page or something. To have all this information no. in it. so this is that all was, up front before they even go up, to the website yeah service. yeah you want, you want to be as 100 percent as clear as possible before they take any further action so oh. you, you don't want to have you don't want to feel sleazy afterwards you don't want to feel like you've tricked anyone because that's not our intention here right our intention is to live to deliver a great experience to, to to show people how good a photographer you are give them some great product and give them potential the potential to buy more if they want to after the shoot beautiful Beautiful. Okay, so we have all this this stuff in the ad. We have a great ad set up now. But where do people go to when they click on the ad? Okay, so terrific. So with uh, any ad, you need to give people some point of contact. Tell them what to do to take action. So it really depends on who you're targeting. Let's say you were targeting a portrait client, so kids, pets, um, newborn, uh, mothers or parents. It's going to be mothers usually. Uh, pregnant women, you want to. You the easiest way to have them take action is to have them comment underneath your post, which is your ad, and have them um, say something like "interested" or um, "yes, pick me." But if if you give them an actual instruction, then of what to do, that's what you want to do with your ad. So you could say something like um, "comment interested below," and I'll send you more details. Something like that. So you could, and the, the reason we're doing this, so I used to say email me or PM me, but now what happens if someone in Facebook comments on your post, you can now PM them directly from Facebook. Wow. So once they've commented, you can PM them. Now you can open up a, a dialogue with that person who is your target client, your a perfectly targeted client, and you can then bring that conversation from Facebook, generally to email, and then to the phone. And in that process, you're gonna find out if that client is a, really is a good match for you, if they really are interested in buying more photography after the session. And if they aren't, then we won't be photographing them. If they are, we're gonna get them booked in. Man, all right, so this is, this is fucking brilliant. So what you're saying is, <laughs> Not because what I would normally do is send them to my website to a like a landing page, right? But you're saying not to do that, but to have them comment actually in the ad, which would there like help the reach of the ad essentially for less money. Right? Yes, that's exactly right. Your that's organic genius. traffic is going to go straight up because oh, people are commenting, God. liking, sharing. <laughs> I hope everybody else is paying attention to this and understanding <laughs> this. I guess if you've ever ran a Facebook ads. Like, I've never thought about that idea. That's genius. Yeah, it's so good. Now, i, I got to say, Matt, if you, like for you personally or the listener, if they're targeting engaged couples, in that case there, you might have a different call to action. You might say, click on this link, and that's when I would send them to a landing okay. page. And I would have a questionnaire, and I would ask them things like, you know, what's your wedding date? Do you have a wedding photographer booked? Um, you can ask as many or as few questions as you like. But you definitely want to know if they've got a photographer booked because if they have, unless there's something pretty amazing about this couple. So I, one of the members of PhotoBizX, they, they recently ran this ad for engaged couples. And one of the couples did have a wedding photographer booked. So this, this photographer knew they weren't going to be photographing the wedding, but it turns out that this uh, couple or the girl side of the couple was high profile and I think a model or something like that with a ton of followers on social media and she looked amazing 
And he said, well, I'm going to still photograph her because she's going to look Smart. great in my portfolio. Yeah. yeah. So he said, I'm going to take a risk. It's only an hour session. Uh, I'm happy to give up the free the free print. I've got a potential to make sales in the back end still, even though I'm not going to book the wedding. And uh, who knows where the photo is going to lead to. And he was tr- also targeting the marketing of her reach potentially. Yeah, yeah. Ho- hopefully. So he, like, there's no promise that she's sure, going to share sure. his photos or tag yeah. him or anything like that. But he knows that at, at the very least, he's going to have some great photos of her and them mm-hmm. that he can use on his website, which will help give him credibility if she's that well known. I would have done it for sure. <laughs> Me, <Like>. too. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. But all right, so yeah. what if it's kind of bouncing off that idea? What if we still did the like, you know, comment below if you're interested, and then we reached out to those people and said, hey, here's a link to um, my form. If you could just fill this out for me real quick. And it'd be like your wedding day. Do you have a wedding photographer? So on and so forth. Could yeah, that still you, work? Yeah, you could definitely do that. The only the it's problem just with that. Another step for them. Yeah, and I think yeah. what happens, let's say, let's say 10, uh, 10 people respond that are interested. If you type in the same uh, answer every time to each one, I guess you could PM them. Yeah, you could PM them that. Yeah, yeah. That, that would definitely work too, Matt. Yeah, for sure. Good idea. That would work. Uh, it's adding an extra step. But it's going to give you some more organic reach, so you could definitely do it that way as well. Okay, that was my thinking. I guess is it's adding an extra step. But if they're already interested, then it wouldn't really be that big of a deal for them. I don't think. No, um, no I agree. I'm just, just paying them. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to think of it from my perspective. If I was like that person responding, um, yeah, what, what would idea. I answer like. that? Probably would answer yep. that actually. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. That that's a good addition. You could easily do that. Or I guess you can kind of try both too. I guess. Yeah, yeah. If so, someone so, if someone replies, if someone replies or comments that they're interested but they haven't followed the link because you haven't received a questionnaire from them, then yeah, just PM them and say, "Hey, just head over and fill out the questionnaire, and yeah. uh, I'll be in touch." See, yeah, I was saying that earlier. So engaging like with with the ad is really important. So like liking, commenting, sharing, all that sort of thing is is pretty vital, I guess, for keeping the cost down and the reach bigger is that it, how it i is? think yeah look, the cost the cost isn't a big factor because you're not okay. really putting that much money into it but it will definitely drive your organic reach like hugely and, and what i mean i ran an ad not too long ago like late last year i think it was november and what we did we we said something like um feel free to upload a photo of your kids because we're looking for kids at a certain age and what happened was the first mother, she posted a photo of her kids, and next thing, the post just went nuts. So all these mothers, it became like a, a fashion competition or a beauty contest between kids because all these mums are putting up these photos of their kids saying how cute their kids are and why they should be picked for this free session. It, it just went crazy. <laughs> That's awesome. I remember years ago people were doing kind of that sort of thing, like when organic reach was like a big thing, like it just happened naturally, you know? that people would do stuff like that on their Facebook page. You'd be like, hey, post a photo of your kid to see if I'm going to give away a free photo shoot for, for them or whatever. And people would flood like the comments with all the photos of their kids. Yes. So basically, this works the same. <laughs> we're doing a very similar thing, but now we're just paying for it because Facebook wants money. Yes. Yeah. But it's, the thing is, you're not paying very much. It's so it's so it's cheap, cheap to get in front of your perfect target client. And if you, the problem is, I think that a lot of photographers have, or a lot of advertisers on Facebook, because they just throw these ads up and they keep throwing money at them, that, and they don't see any return. Whereas if you have a hyper targeted ad, you, you're careful with your actual targeting inside the ads manager, and you get in front of the right people, and then they reply and book you for shoots. You throw money at Facebook all day long and never complain once. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and that's kind of my struggle right now is like I have spent a lot of money and not very much in return yet, but I know that I like how it is. I like how Facebook is limiting what people see, and if you pay more money, you can get more out of it because it's it, at the end, it's gonna, I'm going to make more money from that if I can figure out the ads. But yes. Just figuring out the ads part is the hard part. <laughs> That's right. And that's why people keep throwing money at it because they hear of all these other successes that people are having. That's me. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's having success but me, apparently. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of people like you. A lot. Oh, that's good. I feel a little bit better. And the beer helps <laughs> a little bit. That's why I drink on the podcast because I just feel bad that I just keep throwing money at Facebook all the time. So let me, okay. So 
let's 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 go into I guess we got people that have contacted us that are the perfect fit. What do we do after that? Aside shooting the photos, we just shoot the photos and give them the print, and then I guess try to get a sale from it. Well, no, once so you, I guess you've skipped out a, a big section, and that's the I guess vetting and finding out that the right I, people. Yeah, let's that's, say that's let's, smart too. Well, that's okay. Let's say let's say we get to the shoot. We do the shoot. The, the idea of the shoot is that you deliver what you normally deliver, which should be a great experience for the family. Now, if you if you do pre consultations, then go you know, still do that. Um, if you're too scared to do that because you are giving away a free shoot, you're not used to doing it with those free sessions, then skip it. But my advice, if you're gonna if if you're gonna try this, do exactly what you normally do if that's what's working. So if you're if you're averaging I don't know, fifteen hundred or two thousand dollars per portrait session, and you're doing a, a pre-shoot consultation, then you'd be crazy to leave that out just because you're giving away a free session. Do your pre-consultation, pre-shoot consultation. Go through what you normally go through. Go through your price list. Go through your example wall prints and your albums and your digital slideshows, whatever you sell, and get people familiar with that. Because what you'd really rather do is have the person cancel when they realize they're going to be spending $2,000 with you rather than going through the whole process of doing the free shoot, booking them in for a sales session, having them cancel because they don't want to come. You've, you've done all the editing, you've done all the, the post-production. It would have been a lot easier for that person to cancel the pre-consult. And if you do that pre-consult via a phone call and, and you find that the person's not the right fit for you, then, you know, that's fine. Move on to the next person that, that's responded to your ad. You, know, you might have had... 10, 50, whatever applications, you promise to give away five, you've only got to find five, hopefully you can find 10, 20 or 30 to, to shoot. Does that make sense? Yeah. And you sound very confident in the number of people that were responding to this. Oh, you're, you're saying 10, yeah. 15, 30 people. My first time I ran this ad and I did not know what I was doing, uh, I booked 23 portrait sessions. The, wow. the second, 23, that's right, nuts. And I did you not know what that. I was doing. I booked, I actually went, well, I didn't photograph them because I've got associate shooters, but uh, we, we photographed 23, lots of kids with their pet dog. I made I made up this crazy headline as a test. <laughs> I think it was kids four to eight years old with their pet dog and booked 23 sessions. It was just, it went nuts. Didn't even know and what you were since, doing when you got that. <laughs> did not know what I was doing. <laughs> no. We had people emailing us, PMing us. We get, uh, it was just, yeah, commenting. It was, yeah, all over the shop. Uh, the, the next ad that I ran was for engaged couples. I booked seven shoots. So I picked seven couples, promised to give away five, ended up shooting seven. And from those seven, I booked six weddings. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so this sounds way better than spending money on like paid advertising, like here in the States, we have like, like say a wedding wire or the knot that cost a freaking fortune if you want to be on those sites. And you're saying we don't have to spend hardly anything at all and we can get six, seven weddings at least, right? Yeah, yeah. If you, if, yeah. Well, I'm not, I'm not promising you six or seven weddings, <laughs> but, but, but <laughs> it's up to you to do the conversion, converting at the other end. Sure. So if, like I said, if you deliver a great experience, you do what you normally do, give great photography to the couple and they you build a great rapport with them and they are a good fit then yeah it's it's very wow. likely they're going to book you for their wedding so I'm and don't forget wrong. don't forget you've had that questionnaire they've gone to so you know they haven't got a wedding photographer booked and you know that you have the date free okay so, so that's, that's the vetting process so let's yeah. i guess i'm gonna talk about it from two different standpoints let's talk about from one from weddings and one from like the family documentaries um would that be different or kind of a similar process they are very similar. So with any family shoot, you want to take them from Facebook to email to phone. And then that phone that phone chat is when you determine whether or not you're actually going to go ahead and shoot and photograph that family or that those kids or that pet. Um, and the idea is to find out if they want to spend more money afterwards. For the engaged couples, if, if they don't have a photographer booked and they have a wedding date booked on a day that you're free, then you are going to be booking them in for a session. If everything else looks good on their questionnaire, their, their answered sheets. Sure. If they're not a good fit, then you can uh, I generally email them back rather than call them back and let them know that I've been inundated with applications and um, I've had to go with uh, other couples. Unfortunately, you've missed out. And you can 
you can ask to add them to your email list. You can send them a link to a blog post. You could try and help them out with other things. But at this stage, this couple has a wedding photographer booked. So they're probably not really your target client right. at this stage. So there's, they're probably going to not be a lot of use to you. Okay. No, that makes total sense. Um, yeah, we are kind of running along on time. So let's go ahead and wrap it up here real quick. Is there anything else about the ads that you'd want to say before you know, we take off? Uh, what was going to, let me just check. I think I've got the contact. We've done everything else. The link. Yeah, so I think that the, really the, the main point to get across is once you've created your post, that's when you go into Ads Manager and create your ad mm -hmm. from the post. Um, we, we can, you can go into detail about targeting and stuff like that. We can't go into that now. Um, but you can be very specific with your targeting inside Facebook Ads Manager to get in front of your perfect target client, the one that you've structured your headline and your image around so that only those people potentially will ideally see your ad. That, that's the whole goal. That makes sense. Yeah, so we want to be as targeted as in the ad as would be, would be like choosing the different demographics and income and all that sort of thing in the ad structure. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Um, what else is it? Well, I think the other big thing, I guess, Matt, is that we, we mentioned it briefly. I know we focus a lot on engaged couples, and um, I gave you a few different examples. But this works. It really does. It works for any kind of portrait or wedding photographer. You just have to be hyper specific. And it's funny. I, I jumped into uh, the photo of his ex Facebook group this morning just to double check because there's usually always something on there about Facebook ads. And Darcia from Darcy View Photography, she created an ad in January, middle of January, and she was just getting some feedback before she posted her ad, and she was looking for newborn sessions. And uh, so she ran the ad, we, sort of someone posted then this morning asking how she went with that Facebook ad. And what did she say here? She said, uh, I followed Andrew's guide for targeting with this ad, put my own spin on it for parents with newborns and pregnant women. Uh, I limited it. It to my ideal age client between 24 and 35. She ran two ads and she wound up keeping both running. She got a hundred, she got 81 inquiries and booked 25 sessions. So that was for her first Jesus. ad. Jesus. Wow. Yeah. That's insane. So 25 the very first one sessions. ever that she tried. Yeah. 81 <laughs> and booked 23. Yeah, 25. Book 25. 25. Yes. Jeez. So out of the 81, she went through that vetting process that we sort of touched on and booked 25 sessions. So it just, it just keeps blowing me away. And then I, I read that Facebook doesn't work anymore. It's funny. <laughs> well, you, I think you bring kind of full circle here. So you have an amazing, like, um, I guess, course on Facebook ads. And then you also have a tons of photographers who've actually done this and have had huge success from it. So can you tell me a little bit more about that real quick? Yeah, sure. So the, the ad the ad course is, is pretty much exactly what we've talked about. And I've got a, a cheat sheet for your listeners uh, that want to basically go through what I just went through with you step by step. Uh, they can get that cheat sheet, which will step them through the whole process uh, over at photobizx.com forward slash cheat. That's C-H-E-A-T. Uh, that'll give them the, the, the PDF download. And that'll, like I said, it'll step them through everything we talked about. If they want to go further, there's information there about how to get the ads course. And the course goes into step-by-step -step detail about the whole process, but it gives you lots of different examples. So swipe copy for the, the headlines, for your reasons, for your hooks. Uh, it shows you examples of different questionnaires. It's got role play audio with what to say on the phone calls to the parents or people that are booking a portrait session and also to couples booking an engagement shoot. So it's just everything there in one spot where you can just follow through step by step. And it's not drip fed. You get the course. You just go straight into it. You can have your ad running the next day. Okay. Just to clarify. So basically, you're going to give us the answers for any question and everything of what to do. Yeah. Yep. That's so pretty, what, what we talked about today, but more we'll simplified. Way, uh, way, step step. Yeah, way more info <laughs> for every step of the way. Yeah, but you know what, Matt? When I you say way more info, it's not like it's not you know, like you open it up and present it with twenty four hours worth of video. It's sure. it's mainly text copy. There's a couple of audio files there to listen to, and there's a video instruction on how to set up the ads manager side of things 
for an engagement ad or a portrait ad. So like I said, you can, you can go in there, you know what you want to be targeting with your business and then you step through the course, you have your ad up the next day. Bang. You should be shooting, you should be shooting people, photographing people from your ad the following weekend. So this thing is really going to work then. That, that's amazing. So I'm going to check it out for sure. But all right, so real quick before you go, so what do you have planned for this year and where can people find it? What do I have planned? Well, I did actually have a, um, a massive year of travel planned. I was going to be traveling later in the year. From, well, I'm going to, to the UK to hopefully catch up with some listeners over there and photographers and interview my way around the UK. And then I plan to go from the West Coast to the East Coast of the States. And I was going to catch up with you at some stage too. Please. Um, yeah, I'm looking really looking forward to doing, doing this trip. And uh, I've had to put it off till next year because this year's just gotten too crazy. But, um, yeah, so Linda and I are going to road trip across the States and hopefully stay with photographers and then do interviews along the way, and it should be fun. That's going to be amazing. I mean, most of the people that live in the States have never done that, so <laughs> that's pretty awesome <laughs> that you've been doing that. So that but, um, yeah. so where can people find you at then? Uh, the easiest place is photobizx.com. So that's the, the podcast, the website, everything's there at photobizx.com. Which I suggest everybody take a check out of that because like Photobiz is definitely my favorite podcast. It's my favorite Facebook group. You've really done an amazing job on both for sure. Ah, oh, Cheers, Matt. I appreciate that. And uh, if your listeners go and head over there and have a look, they'll also see uh, instructional videos from you and also interview with you as well. So yeah. and. Uh, yeah, you're all over the place, mate. <laughs> yeah, I feel kind of cool. <laughs> you are, you are. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'll have all the info, the links, the show notes, you know, that sort of thing. But, yeah, thanks for stopping by the bar all the way from Australia. Absolutely my pleasure, Matt. It's, uh, it's been fun being on the other side of the mic. I feel like I'm losing my voice. <laughs> I feel like I've been talking way too much. So, mate, thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. My pleasure. Anytime. You're welcome for anything you would like to chat about. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this episode. I know it was probably a lot of information, but of course you can replay the episode if you missed anything. And uh, be sure to check out the Facebook ads course. Uh, You can find that in the show notes, which is on the website. And if nothing else, get your free Facebook ads cheat sheet because that will be hugely beneficial and obviously very helpful if you're trying to run these ads. And it's completely free, so why not? Um, Like I said, you can find all the information, the links, and all that sort of thing in the show notes which you can find on the website at photobarpodcast.com. Um, and also, before we go, I wanted to let you know what my actual results were from trying out Andrew's Facebook ad course. Um, basically, what I did was run an ad for um, Day in the Life family documentary sessions, mostly to build up my portfolio. But also, of course, I want to make some extra money. Nobody's going to say no to that. Um, so here are the results. Within five minutes, oh, did I say? I spent $50 on the ad and ran it for seven days. Within five minutes of the Facebook post, I had three likes, one share, two comments with tagged friends, plus I had one new page like to my Facebook page. Within three hours, I had eight comments, three with tagged friends, five likes, one share, one completed questionnaire, 122 on my organic reach, and 18 on my paid reach, and also had 22 post clicks. Eight hours into the ad, I had 15 comments, seven with tagged friends, eight post likes, four completed questionnaires, 167 was my organic reach, and 206 was the paid reach with 34 post clicks. So already within eight hours, I've already had four completed questionnaires and plenty of people are tagging their friends and leaving comments, which is amazing. So jumping ahead to two days, I had 36 comments, 10 with tagged friends, 22 likes, 5 completed questionnaires, um, 296 organic reach, 936 with a paid reach, and 106 post clicks. The third day, I had 50 comments, 10 with tagged friends, 24 likes, 7 completed questionnaires, 362 was the organic reach, 1345 was the paid reach, and it had 158 post clicks. So I'm thinking with a lot of this that there were a number of people that were like, you know, clicking on the post because they were interested, but didn't necessarily fit exactly what I was looking for, uh, which is okay. Obviously, the tagged friends thing started to work, and I was getting completed questionnaires from some of the tagged friends. But 
jumping forward uh, let's see day four day four I totally forgot to add the information so I apologize for that but we're going to day five now um, and day five was the last time I, re I recorded information because I forgot to check it at the end but so for day five I had 62 comments 11 with tagged friends 30 likes 9 completed questionnaires 371 was my organic reach 1474 was the paid reach 158 post clicks um, and I think the ad at this point was starting to slow down just a little bit because it basically reached all of the audience I had selected for it but it was still working pretty well but completely at the very end of it I ended up with about um, 18 uh, questionnaires that were completed I haven't really gone through them and like kind of vetted people out so I don't know exactly how many people or families I'm going to be shooting I haven't shot any of the families yet but that's the plan for this week is I'm actually going to go through them and start reaching out to the families I'm probably just kind of based on looking at the different questions as they were kind of coming in I'm probably going to end up shooting about 14 of them for sure either for portfolio and or because I know or at least I have a strong feeling that they're going to spend extra money. But yeah, so that's about it. And um, I'll try to update what kind of transpires from all that in a later episode. But other than that, I, that's going to pretty much wrap everything up. Of course, if you haven't already, you can join the Photo Bar Podcast uh, Facebook group, which you can find at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Photo Bar Podcast. Or you can just search Photo Bar Podcast Lounge in the search field in Facebook. And if you want to, you can always contact me there or you can send me an email at photobarpodcast at gmail.com. I always love hearing from you guys, any ideas that you have, topics that you would like covered, people you would like me to chat with, any ways I can improve the show or just really anything else that you have to say. You know, I'd love to hear from you. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the podcast. I want to make sure that you never miss an episode and it also allows me to know that you're actually listening and that what I'm doing is beneficial. So yeah, if you could just subscribe to the podcast, that would be amazing. And if you really want to be extra awesome, if you could leave me a five-star review on iTunes, because that is how the podcast gets found. It's kind of like SEO for podcast. Um, so that would be amazing if you could do that. I would love it. Plus, it helps me stay motivated. You know, every time I see these reviews from you guys, like it's, just, it's super cool. And I just get very excited about it. But other than that, that is going to end it for this episode. Be sure, again, to check out the show notes for all the links to everything Andrew was talking about. But until next time, have fun, be safe, and I'll talk to you guys then. Hey, has anybody seen where I put my beer at? I got this interview in a second. I can't find my beer. I kind of need that shit for the episode. Hello? Hello?